all, welcome to this special conversation on diabetes in the young. Over the past two decades, there's been a significant rise in type 2 diabetes among individuals in their 20s and 30s, especially in India. It's estimated that approximately 25% of those developing diabetes before 25 now have type 2 diabetes. I'm Aloni Bhatt and in our continuing focus on diabetes, we take a sharp and close look at the symptoms, trends and patterns associated with early onset diabetes, specifically type 2 and the impact of it on both the physical and mental health of young people and ways to effectively manage them. And so I'm very happy to welcome my panel today. I have with me Dr. Ambrish Mittal. He's the chairman of endocrinology at Max Healthcare Delhi. Doctor, welcome. Thank you. Joining us, Dr. Narendra Kotwal. He is the Director and Commandant, Armed Forces Medical College, Pune. Doctor, welcome to Economic Times. Thank you. And finally, we have with us Professor Dr. Shashank Joshi. He is an endocrinologist at Leelawati Hospital in Mumbai. It's a pleasure to have you here with us, Doctor. Thank you. Dr. Amrish Mittal, I'd like to start by asking you about the impact of the early onset of diabetes on young people, you know, especially since as a society, we have long believed in this myth that diabetes is an old age related disease. It does not really impact the young. And it means that often, you know, the young people, those in their 20s and 30s are not prepared to accept uh, that, you know, they're susceptible to metabolic disorders like diabetes. Your views. So uh, thank you. Uh, basically, there are two types of diabetes. One is a type one diabetes. This is an insulin deficient diabetes, which actually occurs in the young. But for, for, for just to clarify, we're going to talk today about type two diabetes, which is the one that is increasing rapidly in the young and in Indians overall. So yes, quite clearly, uh, the, the prevalence of type two diabetes in the youth has increased dramatically over the last three decades. You know, it's gone up like really steep. Now, the thing is that, you know, you people in their youth, in their 20s, early 20s, every day we see people like that, youngsters like that diagnosed with diabetes. They are not they are in You know, they're just starting their careers or finishing their college. They have too many things on their head. The last thing on their mind is their health. So if suddenly they are found to be diabetic, which means, you know, the visions of lifelong restriction and, you know, all those things that can be a real a nerve shattering nerve uh, shattering event because basically what happens is that it comes like a you know often comes like a bolt from the blue and you know people don't know what what to do how to deal with this there are psychological factors of course because they worry about their lifestyle they worry about restrictions they worry about their career they worry they, because they're only starting their career you know so it's or they're in the early stages of their career so quite clearly they're worried about quality of life they're worried about their profession but there are other things, especially in women who get it early. There are issues with pregnancy, reproduction, you know. So when, when some of us were young, you never saw a type 2 diabetic, adult onset diabetic, becoming pregnant. It was a rare thing. Now the age at onset of diabetes has gone down, often in the 20s or even earlier in the teens sometimes. And the age at which women are planning pregnancy has gone up. So we see a significant proportion of young women who are planning pregnancy or are pregnant suffering from diabetes. So that's the other thing Now that has huge implications. And lastly, and very importantly, is the fact that if you get diabetes at such a young age, both you as the patient and your doctor are worried about your long term complications because diabetes complications are often a function of duration of diabetes. So if you get the same condition at 20 versus getting it at 60, the, your exposure to high blood glucose and its associated conditions is for many more decades. So you are much more likely to get into kidney, heart, eye, feet and liver and all those kind of problems. So that's why diabetes in the young has a huge impact and it can be really nerve wracking for people to get diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at such a young age. Yeah, you know, it's quite chilling when one hears about it. Uh, Dr. Kotwal, you know, building on uh, uh, what Dr. Mittal has just spoken of, you know, talk to us about the lifestyle factors that prompt uh, the disease or some of the risk factors that increase the susceptibility uh, towards this disease. And, you know, also talk to us whether there are any symptoms or signs, you know, that uh, young should watch out for. 
lifestyle factors have really a lot, lot of impact on type 2 diabetes, especially in young people. One factor which really impacts is the weight gain. After 10 years of the age, if we say our weight and obese, weight more than 85th centile is our weight, more than 95th centile is obesity. All these individuals are at risk of developing diabetes. Other risk factors are ethnicity. As Indians, we are prone to diabetes, so already we have one risk factors. Other risk factors are like mother is a diabetic, or uh, there's a history of diabetes during uh, index pregnancy, for family history of diabetes, that first degree or second degree relatives having diabetes. Then these days, diet, high refined sugar diet, high fat diet, low fiber diet, rapid weight gain, stress, smoking, the factors like in what we call as predictors of insulin resistance syndrome, like one gets a cancerous negri cancer, which is a velvety darkish pigmentation around neck or axilla. Then polycystic ovary disease, hypertension, dyslipidemia, sleep deprivation, and off late environmental pollution also. Air pollution is also considered to be risk factor for diabetes. Regarding the symptoms, telltale signs, as uh, Dr. Mithal pointed out, it may be both from the blue patient, may be totally asymptomatic. You just do the plasma glucose, it may be high. Or uh, there may be some symptoms if blood sugar is very high, what we call as osmotic symptoms, like increased thirst, increased urination, delayed wound healing, uh, this uh, tingling and numbness, blurring of vision. But generally, there may not be any symptoms. It is just incidental detection. How in such a scenario or, you know, what are the solutions that you think uh, the young should use to effectively balance uh, their social roles, you know, make the right lifestyle choices while also managing the disease? Simrani, thank you so much. I think uh, both the doctors have highlighted the call for action. Hmm. The first thing is diabetes is an asymptomatic disease. There are no symptoms. So most people, as Dr. Mittal said, think diabetes comes after 40 or 60s. In Europe, it comes or in Northern America, it comes after 60s. In India, usually it used to come in the 40s. But the call for action is that anybody about 20, if the waist circumference is more than say 80 centimeters for a woman or 90 centimeters for a man, or if there is one family member with diabetes, that is father, mother, father and mother or one relative. If both parents are diabetic, risk is 90%. One parent is diabetic, it is 70%. One relative is diabetic, it is 40%. There is a need to screen. So first thing is to diagnose because it's asymptomatic. So that's the first call for action. And most of the causes are because of two things. We have become sust and must, sedentary. So mm -hmm. sedentarism is the first thing. And as Dr. Kotwal rightly mentioned. And second is we have become affluent. So we are not controlling the way we eat our food. So it's all linked to lifestyle. And we have become digitally intoxicated. You know, we, we, we are, uh, you know, gadgetized today, you know, whether it is a mobile phone or the screen of a television. So we really need to make a lifestyle uh, so if you get diagnosis with type 2 diabetes and you know, you know, a 204 company study recently said more than 50% of the world's diabetes is now below the age 40. Oh, wow. 50% and I was on the International Diabetes Federation. I was the chair mm -hmm. of Southeast Asia and it's called for action. India has 101 million people living with diabetes today, but 136 million people living with pre-diabetes. So this is a tip of the iceberg and the young people have to live with diabetes the rest of their life. So lifestyle is the primary choice. Eat less, eat slowly, eat very fast, eat on time, eat right, and then at least do 10,000 steps a day, do some Surya Namaskar, do some, you know, uh, appropriate mindfulness, sleep for at least seven hours, do one hour of digital detox, and go to your doctor and take your medicines carefully. So we have a simple A, B, C, D, E mantra, A for A1, C, three month average, keep it below 6.5 or 7, because younger the patient, tighter the control. Keep okay. the blood pressure below 130, keep the NDA cholesterol below 70, keep diet and exercise, that is DNA, &E, and take care of your feet. So the young population is an educated population, but the problem is they are sometimes rebellious and reckless both. So it is all in the mind, you know, controlling reckless behavior and a rebellious behavior needs modulation. So we need okay. to dialogue with them and motivate them that they can actually Look at type 2 diabetes also has remission today. If you really aggressively do a proper lifestyle, it, remission is possible because we can monitor the disease. We have gadgets today which we can put as like a patch 
where you can monitor glucose and we have excellent medicines today which get us under control so i think staying connected with your healthcare ecosystem is the key cog and it's not just about health outcomes it's health and happiness going together you know so it's very okay. important to recognize yeah go ahead. Uh, so, Dr. Joshi, you know, I have a specific question, especially since you mentioned about the tech interventions, you know, so, you know, talk to us uh, in some detail about the tech enabled interventions and innovations that can really help uh, young people in managing uh, diabetes. So, see, we, as I said, if you have a glucose patch, uh, which, which measures sugars 24 seven, it tells us that if I am physically inactive, my glucose is likely to go up. If I do right. a hour of exercise every day, it will come down. If I eat a pakoda or if I drink something, my sugar will go up and down. So it basically gives us a small little nudges for lifestyle changes. So I know that what food increases my sugar, what food decreases my sugar. And it allows me to talk with my health coach, my doctor, my dietitian to get my glucose under control. Because our center of the person is the person living with diabetes. And therefore, AI-enabled technology and apps are important but it is important that the coach or the dietitian or the doctor has to engage with the patient so that they can conquer their glucose and handle the disease better right all right uh, you know dr mittal given this deepening diabetes crisis and you you alluded to it and you know both the doctors have expanded on it uh, from your vantage you know given uh, the experience and the collective experience that all of you possess on this panel uh, talk to us about you know whether there are any specific trends or patterns uh, that you think may be particularly relevant to the younger population especially perhaps when it comes to india I think the trends are very clear. The trend, uh, population trend is of increasing diabetes. That is driven by increasing obesity. It is said that if you can keep your body weight in check and you don't have excess body fat, you can probably eradicate up to 90% of diabetes. So one of the factors that people often don't recognize, and General Kothwal mentioned that briefly, is that obesity is the mother of all modern non-communicable disease, including diabetes. So for, for even for children, actually it starts in the womb. If the mother is either overnourished or undernourished, the risk of the baby getting diabetes later on is higher. Oh, that's if the child is, Yes. If the child is underweight or when born, when the baby is born and then puts on weight, then the risk is very high. Or if it's a large baby and then of course puts on more weight. So children who are overweight or obese and at the, in the last meta-analysis, Roughly 8.3% children in India are overweight or obese. So if that higher proportion are overweight or obese, these will become obese or overweight adolescents and adults. And these are the ones who will have the greatest risk of developing diabetes. So for people in India, for youngsters in India, regardless of your family history, of course, family history is very important, but don't feel secure because you don't have a family history. All of us are prone to uh, type 2 diabetes, more or less. So the, yeah. the idea of maintaining an ideal body weight is mm -hmm. very, very important. And there's one important fact here that Indians, as sometimes we have an ideal body weight as judged by the body mass index, which is height and weight relationship, but we still may have excess abdominal fat. The National Family Health Survey, for example, let's take the mm -hmm. age group of 20 to 30 and let's take women. So 16% were overweight or obese. But 32% were abdominally obese. They had excessive fat in the abdomen, almost double of the ones who were actually overweight. So it is also the where the fat is, the quality of fat that matters. So you may look healthy and you may be within the uh, desired framework of BMI, but still be having excess abdominal fat. So we collect excess fat in the abdomen and also we tend to therefore get metabolic complications at a lower body weight. So in other words, the trends for, for youngsters to watch out as individuals are, they should make sure they're not putting on body weight, they should uh, excess weight, they should make sure their waistlines are, are within the prescribed limits. Uh, and of course, this is only possible by, pos uh, by following the diet that was discussed and, uh, you know, low refined carb, high in fiber, greater in protein, more in veggies, less in, 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 in uh, saturated fat. And on top of that, we have the fact of physical activity. So if you combine all these, keep your waistline in check, you can protect yourself to a large extent from diabetes, even if you have family history.
All right. No, that's well put. Uh, Dr. Kotwal, you know, I want to talk to you about the fact that, you know, a lot of young people are now in high stress careers. But also, right. what is the impact of diabetes on career choices? You know, and that's how do they navigate maybe these demanding uh, professional roles, you know, which may require, say, frequent traveling. Your working hours may be irregulated. You know, there might be late nights. You're coordinating across multiple time zones. How do they manage that? Yes, the, the demands of certain careers may pose challenges for individuals with diabetes. Like high stress professions can contribute to fluctuations in blood sugar levels. Stress hormones like cortisol can affect insulin sensitivity, potentially making it harder for individuals with diabetes to manage their condition effectively. Jobs with irregular schedules may disrupt the routine needed for diabetes management. Consistency in meal timings, medication administration, and sleep patterns is crucial for individuals with diabetes. Traveling can present challenges in maintaining a healthy diet, access to medical care, and regular physical activity. Changes in time zones can also affect blood sugar management due to disruption in daily routines. Shift work can interfere in nature's circadian rhythm, affecting sleep patterns and insulin sensitivity. High stress jobs frequently involve, which involve traveling or long hours may limit access to nutritious food options. So uh, how, to, how to circumvent all these problems? One is to have open communications. Patients with diabetes should communicate with their employer about their diabetes, establishing clear communication, which helps to create a supportive working environment, develop a comprehensive diabetes management plan that takes into account the challenges of profession, including details on meal planning, medication schedules, and strategies to manage stress. Prioritize your health by taking breaks when necessary, when traveling or working irregular hours, plan ahead of access to healthy food options. As pointed out by Dr. Joshi Ali earlier, leverage technology to monitor and manage your diabetes. Continuous glucose monitor, smartphones, apps, and other tools can help you track your blood sugar levels, manage medications, and receive real-time feedback on your health. And very importantly, regular medical checkups. Be realistic about your capabilities and recognize when you need to adjust your workload or take a break. Knowing your limits and prioritizing your health is essential for long-term success in a demanding career. Right. Uh, you know, all of you doctors have mentioned about the debilitating impact that diabetes could have on, you know, a person's life uh, and also on their jobs. Uh, Dr. Joshi, specifically, you know, uh, from your vantage, could you talk to us about uh, what are the mental health implications of diabetes? You know, what are the concerns that arise? And how should uh, the young people uh, navigate that? So, Miloni, thank you for this question. Mental health concerns are very huge. Because when you get diabetes, you get a lot of wanted and unwanted advice. And everybody becomes a diabetes specialist. And then, you know, right from your home people to uh, people around you, friends, internet, you have several WhatsApp universities. Everybody gives you that little piece of advice. So there is a lot of clutter in the brain, which actually scares and creates a fear. So see, there are two problems. In the young population, they are very inquisitive and they want to know about the disease. But a lot of fear gets instilled. So mm -hmm. that is the first thing and that causes distress. And that increases the stress and sympathetic response. And that actually leads to a lot of negativity. The second thing is depression. Diabetes and depression also go ahead in hand. And the young population is more vulnerable because they get stuck with the stigma of the disease that they have to live with this disease the rest of their life. And there is no role for remission. So the first thing is that happiness is as important as health. And even if they have to live with the disease, they have to be mindful of it. They need to be handheld. And we have patients. It's important to empower them with the right knowledge. Give them hope. Learn to make them disciplined. But don't overdo it. I think we need to partner with them, negotiate with them, and then get them and win over their confidence so that we can aid their journey of living happily with diabetes. Because I think people living with diabetes sometimes live longer than their doctors or normal population if they take care of themselves very well. 
I want to build on uh, the, you know, something that Dr. Joshi pointed out. And then, of course, uh, you know, we had uh, uh, Dr. Mittal talk about it. Uh, so, Dr. Kotwal, you know, to you, uh, what's been your experience uh, with, uh, you know, younger patients uh, in terms of reversal, in terms of remission, uh, in terms of they being able to sort of, you know, follow the guideline uh, that is uh, set out by their doctors and also on how they manage, uh, you know, stigma uh, and prejudice uh dr joshi spoke at length about you know empowering uh, patients so could you build upon that and you know in terms of support what could be done uh, firstly i will talk about the stereotype of cyclic prejudices and later on about the reversal of diabetes as uh, was asked by you now this the stereotypes uh, may stem from misconceptions about the condition lack of awareness or ingrained societal attitudes individuals with diabetes may face stigmatization due to misconception about causes and management of the condition Others might associate diabetes with unhealthy lifestyle or lack of self-discipline leading to discrimination. Young adults with diabetes may internalize stereotypes leading to feelings of shame, guilt. This can have a profound impact on their mental health. Prejudices about diabetes may influence employers' perception. They have difficulty in getting employment also. It can lead to social isolation, various educational challenges, and even healthcare disparities. Now, how to address these issues? Very important is to have promote education and awareness like this program which we are having today about the diabetes, debunk myths and foster a supportive environment that encourages open communication and understanding. Breaking down stereotypes and prejudices can contribute to a more inclusive society, allowing young adults with diabetes to lead fulfilling lives without unnecessary societal burdens. It is very important, as was pointed out by Dr. Joshi, that healthy lifestyle, eat less, walk more, smile maximally, that should be the dictum. Happiness should be there. All right. Uh, and what's been your experience, doctor, you know, especially when you've treated uh, or you treat the young uh, who have diabetes? The young person, well, actually, for the first time, when a young patient comes, we should have, we should have to invest, investment in the patient by talking to the patient, talking to him nicely, allaying the fears and emphasizing on the importance of healthy diet, losing weight and exercise. Like as per the guideline, 30 minutes of exercise is good enough. But in our Indians, it exercise should be 60 minutes aerobic exercise, bone strengthening and muscle strengthening exercises. Basically, healthy lifestyle. The lifestyle means eat less. Why, why, would, you say, why would you say it's double the time, uh, Dr. Kotwal? Why, why do you say that? Because if you invest in your patient by talking to the patient, earning the faith of the patient, patient will listen to you. No, no, and not that. that. You said that you said yeah. that you know, uh, thirty minutes of exercise is required. But in India, you know, at least there should be about sixty minutes. So, so, so I was yeah. just so as, right. As was earlier pointed out by Dr. Mittal, also we have more fat around the abdominal area, which is very ah. insulin resistant. So because right. of that, we ought to decrease that insulin sensitivity by exercising more. Okay, understood. All right. Okay, thank you very much, doctor. Uh, so could you talk to us about, you know, the online communities, the peer networks, uh, you know, which many would call safe spaces for those who are facing health challenges. How do you see these platforms along with educational institutions, uh, you know, again, create a safe space for young individuals? So I'm very happy Miloni got out this question because uh, it's a double-edged sword. Online community and online education is great as long as it is vetted and appropriate and filtered correctly. And it gives you that comfort zone that look like me, there are so many people around the world uh, in India of my community, my ethnicity who also have the same problem. So when you share, you're able to care and take care of yourself better. But that should not be at the cost of medical advice and medical supervision. So the, the, the gray line there is that mm -hmm. these online support communities are awesome. Particularly in people living with type 1 diabetes. I must congratulate the type 1 community worldwide. They have done some outstanding jobs including access to insulin, affordability of insulin, educating people how to take insulin. So that space is phenomenal. I bow down to them. And nothing without us, without talking to us, is the theme for type 1 diabetic. And people living with diabetes, that's very important. It breaks stigma. It breaks the mental health barrier. It allows empowerment and is a very good enabler. So 
in the type to space unfortunately the online communities whether it's weight management or other management i think has not been so robust and there's a need for the right education and building up an online community for people who living with type 2 diabetes particularly in the younger space and they are the ones who are seeking out for digital enabled tools sensing uh, you know doing things appropriately so it it in prevention and intervention there is a big role but as i said the caveat is don't get digitally intoxicated and clutter with too much information the filter filter for all that is still your primary care doctor so trust your doctor be connected with the ecosystem for small little things but still go through the filter of the doctor so well said doctor effective management means listening to your doctor being aware of the risks of diabetes especially if it runs in your family regular checkups taking care of your health holistically which is mental health as well as physical health seem to be the key and of course all of you have underscored the importance of a positive attitude so thank you so very much dr amrish mittal dr narendra kotwal and professor dr shashank joshi for all your insights it's been truly informative and we hope that all those watching will be able to better manage their diabetes thank you very much thank you very much thank you thank, thank you, you.